All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank God for each and every one of you. I am uh, currently reaching out to you from Virginia um, and traveling with my family on vacation. So I uh, just wanted to say good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us far and from near. Uh, we're grateful for the opportunity for us to get together, to gather together one with another. Um, this morning I asked if uh, Reverend Dr. David Greer would lead us in our uh, devotion and prayer call this morning. So I'm going to ask him if he would unmute himself, and we will be in his hands this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning and thank you. Amen, amen. We thank God for all things. This morning our daily devotion will be coming from the model prayer that Matthew set up for us, for his disciples, in Matthew chapter 6. And it reads as follows from the Revised Standard Version. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive those who are debtors. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you give and forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive yours. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. And this morning, saints of God, we were looking at the praise, the repentance, the asking, and the yielding. When we praised and we worship our Lord and our Savior, our Father, we give him honor, we give him the glory, and we give him the praise because he is worthy of all praise. So in Psalms 50, 150 and 6 says, let everything that has life praise the Lord. And then as we continue to look at our praise and our spirit, the Lord reminds them that it's imperative and important that we spend quiet time alone with God. A lot of what happens or what we hear from time to time can be a lot of wordiness. So God says, when we want to talk to the Lord, talk to our Father, talk to God, to go somewhere in private where we cannot be distracted by the things that are going on with us, in us, and around us. So he sets up this model because in the synagogues, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are lifting up prayers and wordiness and all the other things. And if we go back, Jesus reminds them, he says in verse 5, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Then he goes on in verse 6 to say, but when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when I went back to take a couple of good looks at that particular part of scripture, it was imperative to me to continue to remember the practice with my Lord and Savior practice. Because there have been moments in time when I could have found myself just being like the hypocrites. And I don't want that to be my example. So I took the example that the Lord gave us. I take the example that our pastor continues to give us about keeping it simple. And the right hand and the left hand, sometimes when we're praying, we can be distracted by the enemy and the things that continue to keep us from being able to be able to go to the Lord with a free heart and with a free presence so that 
when I come to the Lord with my repentance, and if we look at Psalm 51, 9, 10, it, it says that we should ask for forgiveness. I need to come with a repentant heart so I don't end up with a reprobate mind. Because the distance from the head to the heart sometimes can be challenging. Somebody in the phone this morning and on the line understands what I'm saying because it's the faith that we have to look at. There are times and moments in our lives where we can find ourselves asking and praying and looking more at the outside when we have to look at the inside. God does know our hearts, and I believe that. And God has taken us to a place, amen, through his son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, that we may be so ever to be grateful and thankful. So when I repent, that's why Jesus says to us and reminds us that before we come to the Father, we should let him know, look, I forgive, ask me for forgiveness. Oh, God, forgive me. Renew my right spirit and my right heart and my right mind so that I may be able to confess my sins, which you already know but. And, Lord, as I confess these things to you, I ask that you forgive me. And also, I ask for forgiveness. So, Lord, as I yield and give these things to you, I believe and trust as I give them to you, you will do what you always do. You will forgive and give. So I thank God for what Lamentation reminds us about, about how that God has a seal of forgetfulness, that he does not hold us according to those things. And I'm grateful that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, that we should not perish but have everlasting life because it's by the blood of Jesus that we are saved. And salvation is for all men. Amen. So I'm grateful and thankful every morning when I'm able to get up and praise the Lord. It's not for prominent circumstances that my heart continues to want to worship and praise. I think one of our famous gospel singers has made we praise him in advance. Praise him. He says the enemy doesn't like when we praise him. The enemy doesn't want us to praise God. The enemy doesn't want me to praise God. So I'm eternally grateful that when I look to my Heavenly Father and I look at him, and I say, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for looking past my faults and seeing my needs. So I continue to ask God that as his kingdom comes, his will be done. Because it's imperative. I thank God that he is the God of heaven and earth. I thank God because he gives his, us his daily bread day in and day out. I thank God because he's so merciful and gracious. I thank God for the love that surpasses all understanding. I thank God that he looks past my faults and sees my needs. And when I come to him and when I make my confession to him, I do not have to worry about the other stuff of the world. But in doing so, what I become is a disciple. Because in this particular part of the scripture, the disciples are listening and hearing, and they're saying to their, their leader as disciples, what must we do? How should we pray? So he gives them direction. That's why a lot of us may look to see and think of it as the Lord, as the, the prayer, as a model prayer. It's a model prayer. So when we look and we say, our Father, which is in heaven, we have to continue to remember to believe it. That hallowed is his name. That is holy. Jehovah, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he reminds them to give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread is the word of God. And the word of God lasts forever and forgive us of our debts. I'm not trying to be worried about my debts. And as God continues to do that, and I begin to feel that 
and re resonates in my heart, it keeps me from falling and being led into temptation to being caught up in evil. Jesus gives the prayer to the disciples as a model and a guideline to know how to pray. It's meant to be more than just memorization and can help people like you and me shape their hearts to desire what God desires, such as experiencing more of God in their lives. The prayer can be divided into two major parts with the first three lines focusing on God, glory, and the last three focusing on human need. How many of us today need the Lord? How many of us today need the Holy Spirit? How many of us need what God has already presented and given us? How many of us look past our faults or look past the faults of others to look and see our needs? And if you're on the line with us this morning, you are one of those people. And Lord, please help me to continue to be reverent and respectful and mindful of the things of my heart, or my hard-heartedness, that I may be able to come to you, Lord God, and that as you remove the hard-hearted fleshly part, that I too may be able to receive the glory that you have already possessed for me. I thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who came and paid the price on the cross of Calvary for my sins. I thank you for the gift of the death, burial, and resurrection. I thank you, Lord God, that in spite of all things, that when he rose, Lord God, it opened the door for the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come and care and comfort us, that the price, the debt, was paid, that opened the door of salvation to all men, because it's just God gave him, kept his promise for the, gent for the Jews to open the door for the Gentiles, which is you and me, so that we may be adopted into the kingdom, adopted a part of the royal family, royal priesthood. I thank God for Jesus Christ, who is prophet, priest, and king, and sits on the right hand of the Father, interceding in our behalf, today, tomorrow, and forever until his coming. So, Father God, we just want to take this moment to say thank you for your grace. We want to take this moment to say thank you for your mercy. We want to say this morning that it's because of you and who you are. And we thank you for your son. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for all those who continue to pray and worship. We thank you, Lord God, for opening your doors to us. And we should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, Lord God, as we continue on our own personal journeys, we say thank you. Because it's only you that could do it, Lord God. Because we of our own self could not do it. So, Lord God, hope to remind me that in those moments and times, that when I come to you in prayer, I can come, I can close my mind, close my eyes, and open my heart to receive what the Spirit has for me. And Lord God, to be able to share that, to be your disciple, to continue to carry the message, Lord God, that you have that's exemplified in my life. And Lord God, as we go through the challenges, trials, and tribulations of this world, to count it all joy. To count it all joy, Lord God, and to remember that these earthen vessels, Lord God, are only temples. But you have a place that you set up for us, as you mentioned to your disciples that you were preparing to come to. And this place is called heaven. And Lord God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the love. We thank you for all those that are on your line this morning, Lord God. We thank you because, Lord God, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? So, Lord God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for the love. We thank you for the compassion that surpasses all understanding. And it's nothing, Lord God, 
that I or anyone else could do on their own, only because of the love of Jesus. So, Lord God, as we pray and we close out, we just want to say thank you. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. We want to magnify you and glorify you in that which you do through us and in us, Lord God. Trouble won't last, but it won't last always because, Lord God, we know and believe and trust that we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And now, on to him who is able to keep us from falling, to keep us exceedingly above all we can expect and receive. His name is Jesus Christ, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, thank you. We can't even thank you, everyone. God bless you, God. God bless you. And have a good vacation. Thank you, God. Amen, amen. Blessings, church. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, pastor. Be well. Bless your family. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Greer. Thank you, Dr. Greer. God bless you. Man. Reverend Wall is about to return from Virginia, so enjoy your vacation down there with your family. Okay, thank you. I'm passing through. Passing through. Blessings to you and your family, Pastor Wallace. Safe travels. All right. Thank you. Blessings to you and yours. Amen.